Hello. Long time no see. Um, out on the Mommier Trail right now, heading up to Alger Creek Camp. Today's going to be a little bit different. Uh, doing a search and rescue challenge hike for the San Gregorio Search and Rescue Team, San Bernardino. And um, about a almost a four mile hike to Alger Creek Camp. One thing I'm going to do today is, um, you know, not, not the soda hike, but a wilderness protocol hike. Um, utilizing VHF radio, uh, following the wilderness protocol rules, uh, and that A double R A R R L A double R double R L. Um, anyways, uh, I'll go over that in a little bit. But uh, yeah, I moved up towards the mountains, and it took me about 25 minutes to get to the trailhead, which is amazing. Normally, it would have taken me at least probably about two hours to get here. I had to leave super early to beat traffic, blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, 25 minutes. And uh, pretty stoked. But um, So what we're going to do is we're going to follow Wilderness Protocol, which is starting at 10 a.m., getting on 146520, and uh, reaching out, listening to anyone uh, calling for help every three hours. 10 at 10 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 7 o'clock, and throughout the night. Um, I'm not going to be out here that long. Uh, I've got a four mile hike one way, so I'll be out here probably about four miles or four hours, going about, you know, average about two miles an hour, two and a half miles an hour. Um, but yeah, got the radio in the back, and the reason that you do uh, every three hours is to conserve battery life. You don't want to leave your radio on the whole time. You don't know how long you're going to need that battery. Um, so, you do it for five minutes every three hours, starting at 10 a.m. Usually 10 a.m., but I would say every three hours uh, throughout the day. Anyways, like I said, 10, 1, 4, 7, 10, 1, 4, 7, Anyways, you get the picture. Uh, it goes for AM, PM, obviously. But, here we go. Nice trail so far. Guess this is one of the least used trails out here in the San Gregorio Wilderness. Looks pretty used to me, but from what I'm hearing from the rescue team, that this is one of the least used for whatever reason. You can go out to Alger Creek Camp and go a little bit farther to Dobbs, Dobbs Creek Cabin, Dobbs Cabin Creek, something like that. Anyways, uh, here we go. Head up the trail. The radio out. <clears throat> Check in the local repeaters. Uh, especially the pop system. Talked to some people out there. I don't know I'm hiking out and about. Um, find out which repeaters are uh, in the area that are uh, good for use. In case something goes wrong. Which I'm not anticipating anything going wrong. This is purely a uh, challenge hike, uh, light duty, if you want to call it, but uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm going to, got a lot, of, a lot of ideas going through my head right now about wilderness protocol and hiking and preparedness for emergencies. Uh, yeah, got a lot of good ideas right now, so uh, stay tuned. You know, I got something to share real quick. Take two. Okay, I got something to share real quick. I'm gonna hold my thing with my right hand so my antenna's not on my face. Smacking my glasses. But anyways, one thing I was just thinking right now, why I like coming up to the mountains, really 
clears your head, you get on the trail and kind of forget about all the nonsense out in real life. But, you know, thinking you come out here, you're alone, you want to get away, you know, you want to, a lot of people just want to leave everything behind, including all forms of communication, um, which in an emergency, not a good idea. So, um, one of the things I'm thinking of is coming out here and always being in touch and always having the ability to call for help. You know, you don't need to, but that's a pride and an ego thing. Uh, coming up here, getting away from everything, being alone, no communication, that's pride and ego. And it's good to have pride and an ego, but you must keep them tame. You have to keep them tame. You can't let them get out of control. So, some of the things I'm going to be doing in some videos is, you know, not necessarily always going to a Soda Peak and getting on HF, um, which is definitely the goal, but there's also going to be some other stuff I'm going to tie in here um, about being prepared, emergency situations, um, what happens if, um, being, being in touch and all the different forms of uh, being able to be in touch. So we're going to go over a lot of that stuff. Um, not necessarily in this video, but in some videos to come. Um, just, you know, I want people to be, have the knowledge of ham radio, um, emergency communications, satellite devices. Um, you got to be able to reach out for help if you need it. Because you never know. Sometimes it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And if you do certain things enough, there's going to be a win. So... Oh, just uh, clear-minded thoughts out here on the trail, and um, I think a lot of people can benefit from ideas and knowledge that's already out there. We just gotta get it, you know, get it in the hands of everyone, especially if they're like getting out in the wilderness and hiking the mountains and having no cell phone coverage. Um, and what to do if there's a storm, if you hurt yourself. Um, yeah, knowledge is power. W6RIP, San Gregorio Wilderness, listening out for wilderness protocol. Any emergency traffic? The squelch turned down, listening out. W6RIP, listening out for any emergency traffic. Wilderness protocol. We made a couple calls, we're gonna just start hiking again. We gotta move. Okay, Alger Creek, Dobbs Cabin, Dollar Lake Saddle. That way, that's where we're going. And this is the way that this doesn't say is up to Anderson Peak and San, Ber San Bernardino Peak. Um, Things real quick. So here's the, uh, the trailhead, and um, here. So here we are, and uh, pink line over to Alger Creek, Alger Creek, Dobbs Cabin, and then the blue would go up to Anderson Peak. So hopefully this is showing. It's a good thing I didn't decide to go up to Anderson Peak that way because I'm not feeling today. It's been a while since I came out and hiked and. I knew I needed to get out here, and we've already come uh, 2.6 miles, so we got another mile, mile and a half to go, uh, maybe a little less than a mile and a half, and we've been hiking for about an hour and a half so far, so, um, been averaging about 1.8 miles uh, per hour, and uh, max speed 3.6, took a uh, couple little breaks, drink some water, and eat a bar, so 
hurt your average. But anyways, now we're heading up. Um, it looks like um, when you look at this this map, it looks like most of the elevation gain is pretty much done. And now we're just gonna kind of follow this trail around the mountain and uh, get to Alger Creek Camp. All right. Creek down there. I can hear people talking. I think there's some guys that did the same hike as me. And uh, <clears throat> really nice down here. Very nice trail. Going down lower than I thought it was going to be. It's probably a couple feet, a couple hundred feet of uh, declination. Declination. Anyways, deep elevation. Um, yeah, getting close to the creek though. Here we go. Alger Creek Camp. We are here. And uh, this is the, the hike. Actually, 1.8 miles that way. Anyways, um, pretty awesome down here. Definitely gonna have to come out here and camp one night. This is pretty neat. Um, heard some voices, so might come across them, I'm sure. Um, anyways, see you at camp. Backup PHX. So this is when I think I thought it was on Box Mountain, but it's, I think it's over in Arrowhead, uh, Lake Arrowhead. So I'm gonna check it out. W6RIP Alger Creek Camp. Uh, wondering if I'm getting out on, on an HT right now in the woods. W6RIP, just wondering if anybody uh, has got a copy in the woods right now. Alger Creek Camp, over. Well, nothing. Pretty quiet. This is a Saturday. This isn't a very popular repeater, though, either. So, But, hey, one works. It's good to know. The clouds are rolling in. All right, in the truck now. Um, just finished the Alger Creek hike via the Momier Trail. Uh, 7.32 miles round trip. And took me four hours and twenty minutes. So, <coughs> um, average moving speed two miles an hour, just like I wanted. <laughs> Perfect. And I spent a little bit of time down there at the camp and hung out for a few minutes and relaxed and drank some water, ate some snacks. And now I'm uh, leaving the trailhead. And um, we got in touch with uh, one person on two meters. Um, on 146520, he's calling out from Signal Hill over by Long Beach, which is pretty far. Guy had a good signal. And um, 
Anyways, nothing hurt on uh, running wilderness protocol. And um, but I was listening on the way down. I wasn't worried about my battery dying. I knew I only had a, like three miles to go, so I just left it on and um, listened out. But I just think of like how many people could like save themselves if they knew about ham radio and its capabilities. And you know, if more hikers got involved and just got a thirty-dollar bail fang and learned how to use it. Um, you know, how many people can relay in to, uh, to others, you know, to hit a repeater, you know, maybe that's, I mean, that's the whole thing with wilderness protocols, you know, you might, you might not be able to hit a repeater, but you might be able to get in touch with somebody who can, um, this whole thing, you know, it's reaching out and listening and, you know, listen, listen, but, uh, if, I mean, just think about if everyone, if there's so many hikers out there doing that every three hours, you know, uh, 10, 1, 4, 7, 10, 1, 4, 7, 10, 1, 4, 7, you know, just uh, listening out for five minutes, and, um, you know, if something happens, somebody got lost, they can reach out and, and get some help, and uh, maybe even local help, um, but, like I said, people got to want to, they got to want to, they, you know, they got to want to be in, in touch, uh, even though they don't you know, they don't have to be, but they should, and, uh, anyways, long story short, uh, finish this up, but, uh, $30 bail fang, and they have really good batteries, and if people learned how to use them, I think it'd save a lot of, a lot of, a lot of people, and, um, I'm gonna reach out to the search and rescue unit, and the forest service, and, um, see if we can post the wilderness protocol up on the trailheads, um, and how to and how to find it and how to learn about it and how to do it and um, you know there's so many people that are out there that reach you know that reach out for help that you know hopefully they have a satellite device and, I mean that's the only other way but um, <clears throat> yeah I think it would bring some good people to the hobby if they learned about it and especially now that you know soda summits on the air is getting so active I think every, all this uh, soda activators need to start following the wilderness protocol better and actually, you know, actually um, using it and working it and uh, spread the word about it and, uh, you know, maybe not do any soda activations um, on, you know, on those hours, 7, 10, 1, 3, 1, 4, 5, or 1, 4, 7, <laughs> um, so, or maybe even it would be kind of cool to I think I might try to do is try to be up on a mountain peak at one o'clock or ten o'clock or something, and um, four o'clock. You know that way you can really listen out, and uh, if someone's reaching out for help. But um, you know that could be years to come before it gets before it grows. But I think I think it will. I think it, you know just knowledge, people learning about it and knowing how it can save your life, be pretty sick. Oh yeah. All right. Peace out.